Before we start, right now, if you're watching this on Friday, I am currently in the Pacific Northwest. I'll be having a meet and greet at the uh, Griot's Garage headquarters at their car meet. And I just wanna let you guys know that. Follow my Instagram. I will give you all the details there on my stories. Uh, maybe I might make a post. But I just wanna let you guys know, if you guys have lived in the Pacific Northwest, that's one part of America that I've never been. So just before we start, I wanted to let you guys know I'll be up there. Today, I'm gonna give you guys an update on my Evo 8. This car was a barn find car and it's been, it's a really, it's a really sick car. It's supposed to make 1200 horsepower, but a lot of you guys have been asking a couple things. One, a uh, common question is where's Drew? And two, what's going on with the Evo 8? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about like just life and shop updates a little bit and explain some stuff that's been going on. I've actually recently gotten some new shop help. His name is Zach. He owns NTX Glow. So you guys have probably seen him in the videos before. He's the one way back in the day that made my extra thick taillights for my SC300. He's rad. He comes here once a week and helps me. So, but real quick, I just want to kind of go over some stuff. Stuff. I don't upload frequently enough to like give you guys solid updates. This car, I've loved racing it and I'm giving it away. No, I'm just kidding. I have to get a new exhaust manifold if you missed that video taken, Jaren. When we tried to tune it, this exhaust manifold is basically because I have the huge cam. It's uh, exhaust gases are just going back into the engine and I might end up doing a bigger turbo, but the goal for this thing is about 500 wheel. Uh, and I think we might be able to accomplish that. And maybe not on the dyno that we use to tune it on because it reads significantly lower than a dyno jet, but gonna be doing that probably do some bigger slicks because these 22s already spin at 330 wheels. So I actually, I know I've mentioned this last, one of the last few videos, I might actually end up selling this car and this is gonna be kind of a talking point today too, but just stay tuned, I guess, for, just keep listening for that. This car, we got the engine and trans in, the Z is, uh, it's got its built LS back in and I think Zach is going to end up getting this car wrapped up and probably back together for me and getting it running ASAP. I've got some new wheels on it just for the meantime. I'm not really excited exactly sure what the purpose of this car is going to be long term, but it's going to be cool. I'm almost done with my V160 swap of my Supra. I've been kind of doing that in my spare time, which is there's literally almost none. This company off eBay sent me the wrong freaking diff. So I got to return that and had to buy a whole bunch of new parts. As you can see, I've got my amazing ACT flywheel in this hoe and I'm super stoked on it. Now I just gotta get the clutch on, but the V160 is a super intriguing input shaft. So the uh, clutch alignment tool is, is kind of rare. So I had to buy a special one, which might've come in today. But anyways, I got a new exhaust manifold for that car. Bought a stuff, bunch of stuff from Summit for that car. The R33 is running. Uh, Zach was kind of, Zach for the past couple weeks has actually been just going back through and through whenever he kind of like got all the bags and stuff together. A lot of stuff was just left undone, which is whatever. Zach's been going through and making sure that everything's buttoned up on this car. So the R33 should be tuned sometime soon, but I want to make sure everything is completely buttoned up. Like the suspension wasn't even like tightened down. And I, I did not know that. So I'm glad I didn't drive it. The Evo just needs, it's it should be here soon, but it just needs a new master cylinder. And the S2000 has had some really interesting issues. We're currently talking to Honda. It's It's a really, unique issue and it is not something that even the best minds have been able to figure out. So of course, as soon as I buy this car, I touch it, something stops working and Zach has been kind of avidly working on this. <laughs> We're gonna update you on this car. This car, I finally got my uh, exhaust manifold and turbo for it. I'm doing an HX35 on the K24. Gonna be running a stock K24 for a little while. I did ship off the other two blocks and uh, we're gonna get them sleeved. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna get this in as soon as possible. I'm only waiting for the Hossport rear mount because they do change for the all wheel drive. So I've gotta get the Hossport mounts and then we can finally put the K24 in the Civic. Aside from that, I've got some other stuff in the garage. Probably gonna sell my one V1 STI just because I don't, I need to have less cars. <laughs> and if you guys haven't noticed, I'm really trying to drive the cars that I currently own. I'm trying to build them up and like build, race, break, repeat sort of deal. I had this like streak of buying a bunch of cars and now I'm kind of tired of it. The tarp car has been quite the conversation piece. I think it's finally time I show it to you. My cousin called me and was like, hey, like, Uncle Paul's got this car that I know you're gonna want. And I was like, well, what is it? He was like, we don't know. <laughs> he was like, it's got a carbon fiber hood and all this stuff. And he was like, I know you're gonna want it. And I was like, deal. I was like, I'll come wow. It has a 
ARP head studs. Wait, are these HKS cams? Oh, CP. What's that? I have CP pistons. Is that good? Yeah. It's gonna felt motor. <laughs> it starts with a V. And it rhymes with Schmoltex. Oh, oh, just straight. Oh, God, it went all over the place. Dude, this rear bumper is stupid how cool it looks. Decarbon my whole ass roof. Cleanly. What a unit. God dang, and look at that booty. But I'm so stoked. Yeah, it's like Christmas. <laughs> Let's go. silly and start talking about where in the world we can put this turbo because we now we have the HTP welder we can do dumb things and we can do whatever the heck we want there's no rules do you see any challenges in specific for building something in this engine bay or like what's your thoughts so far about that the intercooler what do you think like where could be a cool place or an efficient place we could put I would actually like to place it back behind the radiator and that's for protection of the engine. If you can see the turbo, rocks can probably yeah, get it Yeah, rocks too. can see it too. So it's probably not gonna be something to where we like put the turbo right here and then like turn it downwards and then put it right into the intercooler. So we're probably gonna yeah, mix gonna, that idea. We're gonna try to package it nice and tight and as efficient as possible. You can either do it kind of conventionally, just like you would expect some people do forward mount. That but just makes it, the exhaust a little tighter. It makes the exhaust way tight. We can put a big filter in there that's low restriction and get plenty of good cold air to it. For anybody who's wanting to get into or learn about how exhaust manifolds are done, what do we need here? to make that happen. So a good TIG welder is gonna be what you wanna start with. There's a couple different companies that actually sell collectors that are preformed, cast. That's way easier than mm -hmm. trying to make your own. I'm just gonna use some inch and a half Schedule 10 weld Ls. Okay. Some people use uh, Schedule 40, which is a little bit thicker wall. But since we're keeping the turbo actually fairly close to the motor, we don't have to worry about how much weight it's trying to support. So we can go with a thinner wall setup. It's gonna actually help the turbo light off faster. Uh, and keep the car lighter. Ironically, I'm wearing this shirt today, so <laughs> that wasn't planned. So the Evo, two years ago, I bought the car from a, my friend uh, Dustin, which you guys have seen him a couple times in the videos. He's come over and helped me out for, with the car a few times, but it was literally in a barn. It had some rusted parts, it was not running, it did have an engine in it, it did have a trans sitting in the trunk. I bought it and then I revealed it to you guys as my barn find Evo that I was going to restore. One of the first things we did with the car was do the body work and get the body kit figured out. Um, and also take the engine out. The engine, was fully built, however, something had passed through the motor causing it to not run for very long, so I wasn't, able, wasn't actually able to use that engine. We worked with MA Performance, they built and sent us out a 2.2 long rod that's good for about 1,000, 1,200 horsepower. It's gonna be really cool, and I will point out, I guess, that I'm really glad that I'm getting really good seat time with my Civics at the moment, because this car is gonna be a beast that I need to work my way up to. 
uh, for drag racing, but I will be drag racing it. A lot of people have been asking about Drew as well. So Drew started working for me um, a little over a year ago. It was right before Gabriella was born, actually. I hired him as, well, I didn't actually hire him at first. I wanted him to just come over to fabricate for me because I had so many various projects and, and I had like, a bunch of just little stuff going on, like exhausts, intercooler pipes, and he could weld. Long story short, he ended up actually working for me, like, I guess, part time-ish, and uh, wasn't ever actually my intention, but it worked out for me because I had somebody working for me. And because of Drew, I was able to purchase more cars and I was able to like get more content out, which was really good. That's why I bought the Mark III Supra. Literally because of Drew, I bought the Mark III Supra because I figured, you know, oh, I got somebody working for me now. I can get cars done in the background and he can get stuff running for me and whatever. Anyways, speaking of Drew and welding, so the only thing really that's prevent, the only thing that really has been preventing this car from running for, I mean, I wanna say almost a year now, is the exhaust manifold. I got a very big, very expensive Zona Rotor Turbo. Drew said he always wanted to make an exhaust manifold. And so I was like, cool, that's great. I want you to have fun here and I want you to be able to use your creative abilities. Bought all the materials and paid him to start making an exhaust manifold. So about, so about a thousand dollars in, in parts and labor later, um, Drew went into CAD and designed some this. And then he ended up tacking it together, but he was using these hose clamps, which he didn't like. He needed some better tools. And then I contacted another company to get said tools. Unfortunately, they were out of stock because of the supply shortages. It kind of just never got done. And so I'm to the point now, and I went, <sighs> Like, I don't know, I was pretty excited about it. Like even like this little collector right here was super expensive. And uh, even though this was gonna be a pretty heavy exhaust manifold, I was stoked on it. Like he had a whole CAD file about it and he was pretty excited about it. And then I guess because he couldn't use the hose clamps, he just couldn't finish it. So now I have this thousand dollar sunk cost like thingy um, that, that doesn't function for me at all. Here is the massive chonk muffin that I'm supposed to be using for the Evo. This thing was is, is amazing and I am just so, so amped uh, about it. But, but this thing is supposed to be good to up to like 13, uh, 1200, 1100, something like that, high horsepower. And so he was going to make a V-banded exhaust manifold for me. And I guess because I couldn't get him the tools he wanted, the project was sort of just like abandoned and left. So at this point, I now have a very nice, uh, freshly painted with a super overbuilt engine paperweight sitting in my garage. Uh, so really, ultimately, at this point, it's on me. I just need to go ahead and buy an exhaust manifold for the car. Because I've been trying to kind of dip my feet into other stuff, I don't really, if you guys don't know, like my job's not to tinker with cars all day long. It's to try and make content and to, to go and drive and to promote for companies and do this and that. So like, that's not what I do. And so I don't really have time to just do that kind of thing. I guess to kind of segue into that, where is Drew now? As he was working for me, obviously like me being a parent, running a big shop with a lot of builds and not being one of the biggest YouTubers out there, like it is expensive for me to uh, hire somebody, especially that's working for me every day. So I couldn't hire him full Time. So while he was working here, he was pretty much looking for a job the whole time. And uh, long story short, ended up getting a, a job in corporate world about a month and a half ago, two months ago. The idea was, and I don't know if this is still the plan, but he wanted to get the job so that he could just make a little bit more money and then come to work for me on the weekends or after hours or something like that, which is great because I constantly have stuff. I have so much stuff to do even still. So essentially he started working more hours than he had intended on and basically said, I can't do anything for you anymore. So huge bummer because there's a lot of stuff that has been left unfinished and I kind of like need somebody to do fabrication for me. So it was super nice having someone like Drew because I was able to like put this car on a lift like at, at its beginning stages, put this car on a lift and go to Trackstar for a day, film my content and be like, hey, can you check this out and let me know what I need to buy? You make me a huge list of things that I need to purchase. And so he was able to do stuff like that. You know, he was able to weld and, you know, make me exhausts and, and this and that, and make me intercooler piping. And then towards the end, I think he started getting tired of just fabricating all the time. So he wanted to just do more nut and bolt stuff, irrelevant, I guess. But now I'm just stuck with a bunch of paperweights that uh, don't run. So that's kind of, uh, it, in regards to the Mark III, the car was supposed to be done a long time ago. I literally bought everything for it to be done 
but he was very particular when he worked here and this is nothing against him. I'm not, he was very particular. Because of that, I had to get like the exact right parts. It took a while to get stuff here and it ended up just not ever getting done. I don't know what to do about the Mark III. A hundred percent, I know what I'm going to do about the, the Evo 8. At this point, the Evo, like, I'm, I guess I'm going to just have to try and find an exhaust manifold for this Sona rotor. And uh, it kind of sucks because, like, I, you know, I sunk a grand into this metal that doesn't do anything for me. But it is what it is. I guess that's part of it. But I'm still building this car, and it just kind of stinks. This has been one of the cars that I know that, I, I mean, I personally have been so stoked about and so ready for. I would say this car has probably been the most popular uh, on my channel in the past couple years. And so... I just am at a point, I'm kind of at a stalemate, if you will, with just buying parts. But again, like I'm already spending so much on getting this all-wheel drive Civic to run because I'm just experimenting with that content. It's hard to just go back and just make one video about this and it's still not run. I'm figuring things out again since I have Zach. It's really nice. It's just one day a week, but it helps me a little bit. Um, I'm really just kind of trying to get, I'm trying to get some help again. I definitely need some fabrication help, but I wanted to make a video and explain to you guys uh, what was going on. Cause I literally get asked all of the time what's going on um, with my Evo 8. And I do want to clarify, I'm not putting the blame on anybody, but it puts me in a weird situation. Me as a business owner, it puts me in a weird situation when I hire somebody and, uh, I buy things specifically to be done and it doesn't get done. And so it's just, I mean, I've just, I'm in an odd spot and I really wanted to explain myself again because I just get the questions so, so often. But I do want to say a huge thank you to MA Performance. I'm really, really excited to see what we can do with this engine and uh, what kind of times we can put down. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get some bead locks made for this car for when I do actually race it. And uh, since the car is going to be down for a little while, I've got the fronts off. I'm actually respecking them to get them a little less aggressive on the fronts. And I've gotta get the brakes rebuilt too. Dustin, the guy that sold me this car is actually freed up on certain days of the week and he might start coming here, helping me out and getting this done. But as for now, I've kind of just like put it on the back burner for a while. I really wasn't sure if Drew was gonna come back. And to be honest, I still am not sure. I haven't heard from him since. But I mean, he's getting his work and stuff figured out. So I just want you guys to know that like, that is what happened. Um, it, it's everything's amicable and it's all good. Like I still love Drew and he's amazing. And I, I hope he can come back and get some stuff done for me eventually. Cause I still need an exhaust for this car. And I, I would like to get all that kind of stuff done over there. Maybe I can learn how to weld, but at this point in time, I'd rather just stick to driving and filming. So my Evo 8. The beautiful, beautiful, dusty, beautiful Evo that just sits here. It's hurt me so bad because it has been so close yet so far for such a long time. You know, I'm not, I'm not too mad because the car's mint and it's staying in a great place and in an air conditioned shop and uh, it's not getting, it's not sitting in the sun, it's not in a barn, it's not getting eaten up and pooped in and that kind of thing. But for the first time in a long time, I've been like really, really excited to get and dive into the Civic stuff, get some serious drag racing time in and um, do the whole build, race, break, repeat thing. And if anyone's interested, I, I, I really don't think anybody's gonna buy it as it sits, but, as it sits, I probably have about 18 grand in it. I was just gonna sell it as it sits for 10. Or if I have to take the engine out, the wheels off, the body kit off, all that kind of stuff, I would sell the rolling shelf for like 2,500 bucks, which is a considerable good deal because it's got brand new suspension and stuff. So if there's anything I want you guys to know is I appreciate you guys and I uh, made this video for you just in case you were wondering what's going on. Every day I drop daily advice on you guys and I think this one's really important for you guys to hear. If you're not willing to do more than you're paid for, you'll never get paid for more than you're doing. You might need to rewind that and hear it again, or I'll just say it again. If you're not willing to do more than you're paid for, you'll never get paid for more than you're doing. That might hit home, might even offend some people, but you know, I have, you know, me as a creator, even before I was a creator, um, when I was in the workforce, I always did more than my assigned task was. I exceeded it with as, you know, as best as I could. And all the successful people out there in the world have that in common. Um, CEOs don't just have tasks to do every day. If they don't exceed their expectations, if they don't exceed their goals, then the company doesn't do well, and they don't do well, they get fired, or the company goes under. If you're only gonna show up and clock in and clock out, then that's all you're really gonna ever get paid for. 
if you show up and do your best, and if you're, you know, it's a different story if your manager doesn't appreciate you, if your boss doesn't appreciate you, then that means you're a valuable asset and you should hike somewhere else. But just giving you guys that info today. I'm gonna get ready, get packed, and I will see you guys in the Pacific Northwest for my first time. Peace out, have an amazing day. Hey guys, I have two videos for you to watch. It helps me a ton if you click on one of them, click on both of them, and just keep watching my content. It really genuinely does. Also, I want you guys to know something. I love you. Okay, bye. <laughs>